What's good? I'm Xavier from the Nurse Over Inspiration Podcast. Today is going to be a episode pertaining to morals and values, and it's going to be the reason that people do not make money online. So first and foremost, before I begin, I'm going to open up with two quotes from Zig Ziglar. The first one is, people don't buy for logical reasons, they buy for emotional reasons. The second one is going to be, with integrity, you have nothing to fear since you have nothing to hide. With integrity, you will do the right thing so you will have no guilt. Now, with that being said, there's a huge rise in terms of fake entrepreneurship online and fake gurus online. Now, inherently, this is not a new issue, but I do feel like it's becoming a little bit more common and quite frankly annoying because more and more people are looking to make money online, but a lot of people are not doing it in a way of integrity or with a way that actually has meaning. So in this video, I'm going to kind of break down the deceitful guys that people use to basically turn you into their own full-time employees and how a lot of companies in terms of the gig economy basically turn you into full-time employees without having to pay you a decent wage or actually give you benefits. And that's not saying that you should pursue some of these avenues of making money, but you do want to kind of be mindful that anytime you make your money online, a lot of this stuff is fake passive income. It is going to be an additional stream of income, but you're going to have to worry about taxes and other things. And you often have to learn about that particular industry in order to be successful in it. And you do have to become a business owner, learn um, how to sell and how to market and different things of that nature. So with that being said, um, there are outright scams you want to avoid. Clear pyramid schemes, multi-level marketing schemes, Ponzi schemes, uh, different things that you want to make sure that you are steering clear of, especially with the crypto market. We've seen with the NFTs a couple of years ago, people were raving about them. Now, nobody really talks about them. The same with certain types of cryptocurrency. So in this podcast, I want to kind of break down how to differentiate who's actually giving you legitimate and good information and who's trying to scam you. Now... Something else I also want to point out is a lot of people sell courses for uh, absorbent fees. A lot of people do speaking tours and other things for high amounts. If you are fans of those people, I always say, hey, go out, support the people that you like. Now, in terms of becoming them one day because they're promising that you're going to make millions, it's probably not going to happen but if you are a salesperson if you are somebody interested in business it's always important to kind of network with people who are in the audience and just kind of go out and get a feel for what that industry has to offer in terms of speaking engagement so that if you do become successful you have an idea of how to set up your process and you also have an idea of what to do and what not to do now with that being said i'm not saying that it's impossible to make money online or even that it's difficult I've been making the money online for years. Back in the day, I used to do drop shipping. I used to sell stuff on eBay. Um, I had a t-shirt company at one point. I worked for a physical t-shirt company at one point. Uh, I've done graphic design and a number of different things. So it is possible. You just have to develop the skill set. And a lot of times, people make it seem like you don't have to have any skills whatsoever. But you have to kind of question those things because they're saying that you have to do nothing but pay a fee and watch their information that inherently should let you know that it's a scam so with that being said i'm going to talk about some of the reasons why people are interested in making money online and why it's becoming more and more popular so first and foremost a lot of people genuinely like having a business like they don't mind the idea of being an entrepreneur making a little extra income and there's nothing wrong with that on the other side of the scale there are people who see random influencers online. Those random influencers sell a course. And with these courses, all the courses are the same. It doesn't matter what industry it's in, but people don't pay attention to the fact that, let's say somebody wants to be a nail tech, somebody wants to be a beautician, somebody wants to be a barber, somebody wants to be a personal trainer, somebody wants to sell real estate or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. Like the course model is the same. Somebody's gonna pop up on a YouTube ad on a social media post, and the posts are based off of um, the different things that you look up online. So every social media site and Google included, when you search certain things, they're going to start to show you stuff based off of what you've been looking at in terms of ads. So with those ads, you're going to see something that's going to spark your interest, and pretty much the courses all go to say, you watch a bunch of free stuff. You see that person's lifestyle, and most of the time it's the lifestyle and a little bit of information mixed in with this lifestyle video. 
under the guise of it being educating, but it's really entertaining. And then they're going to tell you, hey, if you want to be like me, you know, watch this free webinar. You might watch one or two webinars or podcasts or live events. And then eventually when you sign up for their email list or whatever, they're going to start trying to sell you on the back end. So up front in your face, they're smiling. And often at times, the number one thing people do, especially with YouTube, is they'll be like, hey, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not one of those people who's going to try to push things on you. But then as time goes on and they pick up sponsorships, they're going to tell you, oh, click the link in the bio, do this, do that, use my promo code. It's because they're making money off it. Or they'll just tell you to hit their Cash App or their Patreon. So... With that being said, all those scams work the same. It doesn't matter. It's going to always be a high ticket course or a high ticket event. And then they're going to extract money from you. And if they do give you information, it's either going to be very basic information that you probably would already know if you were genuinely looking it up. And uh, a lot of times, sometimes when you go to these events, you'll see, for example, I went to a couple online training events and people would literally be in the audience that weren't personal trainers and had no idea um how to exercise there were a lot of overweight people and the people who put on these events are telling these people hey you don't have to be in shape to be an online personal trainer you don't have to know anything just sell our program and you're going to make money and it's like that's in every industry there are people who will go into any industry with no inclination or idea or interest in that industry and they're only there just because they're being told they can make money so in terms of fake online gurus When you go that route and you're only interested in making money because of somebody's lifestyle or because they said it's easy, that makes you an idiot. And when you don't make money, that's on you. Now, something else that I want you guys to consider is that all the social media platforms promising to pay you to be a creator are only doing that so that you stay on their platforms and pump out more and more content. Now, easy telltale signs would be like this. Let's say you post on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You post the same information, same videos. The platform that wants you to stay on it the most is going to give you the most views. So, for example, YouTube, if I post a video, it'll get a couple of views. If I post a short, it'll get thousands of views most of the time. And that's where my subscribers come from. Instagram, if I post something, sometimes it goes super viral and it gets tens of thousands of uh, views and likes and sometimes it doesn't and then the same with facebook now if any of these other platforms like let's say youtube introduces some kind of new incentive to drive traffic to youtube so creators start focusing on youtube more what the other platforms are going to do is change their algorithm so that the stuff that you post on their platforms start to get more views and more likes and more comments and they only do this to keep you on the platform so you have to consider you're on this platform you say you're trying to make money on this platform let's use youtube as an example again either you're going to pay for youtube premium so that you don't see ads like for example i pay for youtube premium so i don't see ads but When you're on YouTube, you're going to be watching other YouTubers. You're going to be consuming their content. They're going to be shoveling stuff down your throat, pause. Uh, Even without you seeing the ads, you still got to hear about ButcherBox. You still got to hear about um, Athletic Greens and all the other crap that people try to sell you. And it happens across the board so you don't win. And the same with other platforms such as Facebook. You're on there. You're going to be looking up what your friends are doing. The same on Instagram. You're going to be going through their stories. As you scroll through the stories, you're going to get hit with ads and different things like that. And those are microtransactions that those social media companies are making money off of. So trying to monetize your account means nothing. My YouTube account, Instagram account is monetized. It gets a decent amount of views, but the pay is crap. The same way YouTube, my YouTube is currently not monetized, but I've been monetized on YouTube with three different accounts in the past. These uh, platforms do not pay you well, but they use the idea of you getting paid as a reason to keep you on the platform. Now... The other side of the scale, a lot of times people think it's super easy to make money online because they read a BuzzFeed article, they watched the video on YouTube, they seen something on Yahoo Finance that broke down, oh, you can start a blog for $3 and all you have to do is write a blog and it's going to be so interesting that everybody's going to read it and then you can run an ad on that blog and when you run an ad on that blog, people are going to pay you for it, influencers and advertisers are going to reach out to you and want to work with you because you wrote a blog. And you have to consider this. One, if you're not an entertaining person and you do not write very well, nobody's going to read your blog. And you also have to compete against other pre-established and existing blogs. The same when you start a fitness account or a podcast or anything else on any other platform. You have to establish yourself and build your way up. Nobody's going to be 
offering you legitimate business up front and it's going to take a long time before you get to that point but these articles make it seem like it's going to be super easy and i'm going to do a separate uh podcast breaking down like the um it's probably about 15 different business models that uh websites like nerd wallet or yahoo finance or youtubers will tell people to do it to earn like ten thousand dollars a month and it's just simply not practical i'm gonna save that for a separate video the main reason i wanted to make this uh particular podcast is because a lot of people are disenchanted with trying to sell things online so i'm going to break down some of the reasons why that is and a lot of it is cognitive biases and people uh, making decisions based off of emotion rather than logic and everybody makes these mistakes so i'm not trying to um deprecate or insult anybody's intelligence i'm just saying we have to be a little bit more mindful about what we're doing and it's like anytime anybody tells you anything is super easy uh that's a red flag anytime anybody tells you hey joining my community of people makes you want an elite you're going to be you're so smart you're going to become a millionaire X, Y, and Z, that's a red flag. If they tell you that you just have to turn off your brain and use their system and you're going to make millions with ease, that is also going to be a red flag. Now, the other thing to consider too is that a lot of times people won't upfront sell you things. They walk you through a sales funnel. So they tell you, watch my webinar, subscribe to my platforms. Because when you watch their stories and other things, that's what they're going to try to sell you with or they're going to send you emails with offers in it. Or they're going to use affiliate links and commission links. And what that is, is like you type in their promo code or click the link. And if you purchase something, they get paid. So they might recommend products that they're using on Amazon. They might tell you about other social media influencers who they uh, coincidentally happen to be the bestest of friends with. And when you buy those products, they're going to get a percentage of that. Now, things to ask yourself before trying to make money online and going down this route is one, do you have the time and the willingness to learn the basics and the fundamentals of marketing, copywriting, different things of this nature? Not saying that you yourself have to do these things. You can definitely outsource this to somebody else, but you want to understand the basics. So if you are hiring somebody, you're not getting scammed and you're not shooting yourself in the foot because you can have a conversation using industry speak and you can communicate to them that you have a comprehension of marketing and internet terms so that you don't get took it for a ride now outside of that you also want to just have a fundamental understanding of business so that you know when you're making a profit and what to do with your profits when they're reinvested into the business and when you can pay yourself the other side of the scale is if you're buying from a brand that's faceless uh, that can be a red flag if there's no contact information and no real way of talking to a person for example if you go into walmart and uh cashier named brandon is rude if you need to go call corporate or send an email you know that the cashier name was brandon and he worked at this walmart at this particular place um but online if you're buying from a website or a brand on instagram you don't know the person behind the account that is a red flag because if you run into an issue then you're gonna probably have a hard time getting your money back uh just being honest so with that being said, something else to consider with these accounts on YouTube and other places, are these accounts consistent in what they sell or do they jump from trend to trend? For example, somebody might be, oh, keto is the next wave. You need to do keto. Then they jump into real estate. Then they jump into trying to sell you stocks and they jump into trying to sell you crypto and they kind of act like they still do the other stuff. But really what they're doing is chasing a check. So they're not really interested in any of the things that they're talking about. They're interested in trying to fool as many people as possible and extract as much money from those same people. Now, something else to consider is most people can't differentiate between fake testimonials, fake comments, and people working together on the back end to prop up one person and make them look like they are some know uh some know it all some kind of omnificent being and they do that because they can protect themselves and if anything should happen it's going to fall on that person who's basically a patsy so with that being said like let's say a fitness chick or a fitness dude on youtube might post about a lot of different supplements might talk about a lot of different things and they aren't the brightest crayon in the box but for some reason they seem to know a lot about some particular miracle supplement from some kind of company that's obscure that you never really heard of and they claim that they are not affiliated with that company but they say good things about this company and they constantly talk about these particular products now in general with the rest of the stuff that you're going to watch in their videos and seeing their content is not necessarily aligning with 
whatever that company's values is, that's going to be a red flag. So what happens is these companies will send people products. They will pay for their lifestyles and different things to make that person look like they are living a particular way. That person is then going to assign value and credit to their success to whatever that particular product is. And you can usually tell because what happens is from time to time, that person will be, oh, I'm a vegan. Oh, I'm a carnivore. Oh, I'm doing CrossFit, no body weight. And they're not really consistent in what they're doing. And they always have a BS reason for why they switched over to something different. And sometimes it might be something that they were vehemently against in the beginning of their um, social media climb. But for some reason, they double back to it. Now, the other side of the scale is, are you interested in doing this because you are actually interested and passionate about whatever the subject matter is or are you doing it because of money and a lifestyle because a lot of people know that some of these people are scam artists but they cling to them with the hopes of learning the tricks to be a finesse to be a hustler to be deceitful so they can take those same tactics and apply it and make money so they have no interest in whatever it is that person is selling they do like that that person has a certain lifestyle and a certain image and they're merely just trying to Learn that person's deceitful tactics so that they, too, can live a similar lifestyle. And then the last thing is going to be, whether it's a brand or a social media influencer, did they tell you that this is going to be an easy process, that you can't lose, that others are stupid for not joining, that you're special? Because when you watch their contents and their information, it's going to elevate your life so much further than anybody else's life then that's also going to obviously be a red flag. And this happens a lot of times you would think it's just teenagers, but with my clients, with people on the internet, when I see horror stories and stuff, a lot of times it's older people as well. And I feel like it's people that maybe are preteens to early adults and then adults who are probably middle aged to senior citizens who are trying to figure out how to make a little bit of extra income without having to put in too much work. So it's a wide spectrum of people affected by it. Now, with that being said, I want to talk about the online fitness influencer and why most people are drawn to them. So the main characteristics are going to be the flashy lifestyle. So it's going to be things like posting a lot of cash, screenshots of cash apps and bank accounts, uh, vacations, different things of that nature. Now, sometimes uh, what people often overlook is that some of these people might have regular jobs and what they'll do is they're going on vacation anyway, so they're going to load up their credit cards they're going to use a firm they're going to use after paying a bunch of different things to buy a bunch of materialistic goods so that they can flex and i've uh trained fitness uh not necessarily fitness influencers but i have trained fitness influencers but influencers in general who what they do is they buy certain things and then they use it for like a week or two for their videos and then they go back to the store and return it or they try to put it online and sell it to recoup some of their money and the reason that they do this is because they're more concerned about maintaining their image and they need for you to think that they're living a certain lifestyle so that they can maintain that lifestyle so pretty much they're trying to fake it till they make it now the other side of the scale is the free videos articles um and other information just proclaiming that there are secret methods that only they know that can make you rich. And a lot of times it's going to be free information. And the reason people do free information is because they subtly make hints to the fact that they have a course coming. And a lot of times they're about, oh, it's a free course, it's a free whatever. And you're going to go through a long, what's called a sales funnel, where they're going to try to pique your interest. And the more you follow the story and the narrative, you're going to end up in a position where it's only going to make sense for you to give them that thousand dollars because you feel like they gave you so much free value and information the other side of the scale too is a lot of times people have these lame complex stories that show them as underdogs for example i know a guy i'm not gonna say his name but he grew up in high park in chicago which is a very affluent and good neighborhood but if you let him tell it he'll tell you like he grew up in the ghetto shooting guns and had to go to military school and basically some kind of fresh prince story but that's not necessarily the case, and it's not true. Now, Chicago is a treacherous place. Hyde Park um, is in an area where you really, once you leave Hyde Park, you're going to immediately be in the ghetto nine times out of ten unless you're going more towards the downtown area. So it's not an inherently safe area. But a lot of times people use, oh, I grew up in the hood, or I grew up poor, or I grew up a, a drug dealer and went to jail and all this other corny stuff to make it seem like that... They shouldn't have been able to make it where they are. And surely if they can make it, 
you can associate with them so you can have the esteem they have from coming from a particular background. And also, if you're not in a position like them, it would make sense to listen to advice from me because I went a route that you don't have to go. So now you can purchase my product and you can be way ahead of me. And then most importantly, for the people who are in situations of disparity and desperation, they're going to be like, oh, well, I need to buy this course so I can change my life because I don't want to go through everything that person went through. So people use the affinity that people have for uh, rap culture, the drug culture, and the urban aesthetic to push their brands and it's lame but from an emotional standpoint it's going to speak to a lot of people and it's going to draw them in now the other side of scale too is going to be calling in fake gurus and associates so a lot of times people will have people around them sometimes off camera those people never show their faces those people say that they do good business, but they don't want to show their face for privacy. And they have a bunch of corny excuses. Then they're going to show you a bunch of charts, a bunch of graphs um, about things that happen throughout the week. They're not going to verify. For example, they might say, hey, I got a lot of Google stock. This person told me to buy stock in Google. And then he told me when to sell at the right moment. So let me show you these graphs that you don't know how to read or understand. Or they're so tiny on my screen, you can't even tell if this is a real program I'm using or just some stuff I made in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you this stuff and this is how I made my money. And then they're going to probably show you an expensive trinket and be like, um, I was able to buy this because I made money from doing this. So it's a number of different ways that online gurus take advantage of people, but I'm going to step away from that and I'm going to talk about social media influencers. Now, they might sound like they're the same, but they're slightly different because the social media influencer pretends like they are not trying to sell you anything 100% of the time. And most of the time, their money comes from the fact that a lot of brands just pay them some cash and give them some products to promote their stuff. And a good example of this would be something like Twitch or OnlyFans. They both use celebrities and try to use celebrities as testimonials for the fact that you can make money on their uh, platform. So Twitch would be like, hey, yeah, you should get paid for... Um, playing video games all day every day the whole day you're not a loser because you play video games you can actually make money and they do that and then they'll grab a rapper or grab some other celebrity or grab some famous gamer off youtube or wherever to use them as an example to draw you in with only fans they be oh you know this celebrity made 300 million dollars in one hour being on only fans and it's all cap and all lies because you have to consider this websites like forbes that do a list of millionaires and billionaires if these people are making such good money even if they didn't make the forbes list forbes would still highlight them tmz or some other kind of um tabloid and magazine or blog would dig up a lot of information on them and would prop them up as somebody who is making a lot of money so when you hear somebody making 200 300 million dollars and forbes is not talking about them cnn is not talking about them that is just paid publicity and it's not real but a lot of times people will see that and be like, oh this person on um, only fans is making a lot of money like now they say that to promote their brand and it's a low-key way of keeping the sex industry full of sex workers because a lot of these people on only fans say that they send pictures of feet or other things um just regular news or whatever but it's really just a clever way to uh mass prostitution now with that being said we're going to go back to uh the regular social media sites so youtube instagram TikTok, like i said earlier they randomly will spike your views and they do that to keep you on the platform because if you're spending all your time on the platform trying to create uh content you're going to consume content on those platforms those platforms are going to make money off of you accidentally seeing ads and just spending time engaging with people on the app now the other side of the scale is going to be affiliate marketing and it's clever because a lot of times these influencers will use uh, what I call shaky camera style footage, so very plain. There's no studio lights. If it's a chick, she might not have on makeup or light makeup on. If it's a guy, he might be like, hey, I just got done working out or I'm washing my Ferrari or Jaguar, and they'll try to make it seem like it's just a very plain Jane video, but they're going to be talking to you about some kind of service or product that changed their life, and they're going to recommend it, and they're going to say, click the link in the bio. bio use my discount code or whatever other corny thing because they're going to get compensation from you utilizing their barcode clicking a link and different things of that nature now all of that is not um organic it is very much so artificial and they have a financial incentive behind it 
they just do it in a way that they try to make it appear as if it's natural so that people stick with their content. Now, with that being said, why do they do that? Because a lot of times when people inherently come out as a business person or a salesperson, immediately people turn off their ears. They stop listening. They try to find something else to do because they're not interested in being sold. And with that being said, sometimes there are people who are interested in being sold. Sometimes there are people who are willing to upfront invest in the materials and the information like for me for example if i'm trying to find certain information and i find somebody online and i can discern that they have the information i'll purchase whatever product they have or whatever education they're offering and the simple reason is for me personally i don't care about how many girls you get how many cars you drive um how many houses you own anything of that nature i want the results if it's a fitness thing i want to know okay well what information do I need to acquire? If it's in investing or money or whatever, what information? I don't care about your testimonials, uh, what recent studies show and all that other crap. I just want the, they call it uh, pick the fruit, study the roots later. I want to be able to pick the fruit and I'll study the roots later and figure out everything else that I need to know. I don't need to know about your fake drug dealer, fake hustling days, your fake struggles. Um, I just want the information so that I could be successful. Now, with the influencer thing, they try to give you a bunch of BS background information in order to sell you on the idea that they're not trying to sell you so that they can sell you. Now, in terms of passive income, a lot of passive income is not so passive. So often at times you hear people say do Airbnb, uh, Toro, different things of that nature. Um one, that's going to be a high cost to get started. And most people don't have that kind of cash laying around or the ability to put that stuff on credit cards. Uh, and it's also going to require you to know the laws in your local area to have the proper insurances, license and registrations um, and to hire people to maintain the cars and clean the houses. And it's not to say that it's not worthwhile. Um, I've done Airbnbs. I know people who are still currently doing the Airbnbs and making good money with it it just has to be something that you're willing to invest time in and keep up with the other side of the scale is going to be drop shipping and amazon fba they make it seem like it's going to be hands off um you can make money with it but you have to invest you have to learn products and you have to be willing to figure out how to source those products and how you want to handle like returns and different things of that nature so you can make money with both Airbnb. Airbnbs and uh, Amazon FBAs is going to require some legwork, though. The same with real estate, similar to Airbnbs. They're going to make it seem like, oh, well, you can just jump in, no money down. You don't have to know anything, but you have to keep in mind when you don't know anything and you're going to talk to investors or people trying to buy their houses and cold calling and doing all this other annoying stuff. Those people are going to ask you questions. If you go into a bank and you're like, yeah, I want to do a real estate deal. And you throw out terms, you just basically tell them you're trying to flip the house. They're still going to ask you questions. They want to know how committed you are and how invested you are. And they're going to know what you know. And if you don't know any industry terms, you're just going to make yourself look foolish. Outside of that, the crypto, stock, forex, um, non-tangible people. A lot of times they're trying to sell you something online, some kind of digital asset like NFTs, for example. And they'll show you fake profits, fake screenshots. Uh, fake testimonials, different things like that. And they're usually gatekeepers and they have some kind of secret Discord or Reddit or, you know, obscure version of social media that you have to go to in order to get more information. And they do it because from a marketing standpoint, it makes you feel like you're a part of a secret society because you move from one website to another website because you two won't allow them to talk about whatever. And most of the time they won't allow them to talk about it because it violates their uh, terms of agreement on YouTube and other social media platforms, which should be a red flag. A lot of times people try to sell you a high price uh, membership and unneeded software and services in order to make money. So that should be a red flag. Now, in terms of like influencers and fake Internet gurus, um, something to consider is in a book influenced by uh, Robert Cialdini is that there are six ways that people attempt to influence you and really it's seven because uh in the, in the book is six but he recently wrote an article and i think he may be coming out with another book or it might already be out with a seventh law is unity so the first law is uh reciprocity the second one is going to be commitment and consistency third is going to be social proof the fourth is going to be authority uh the fifth is going to be liking the sixth is going to be scarcity and like i said the last one is going to be unity now unity is like the sense of community so social media 
seeing that they have a network or it appears that they have a network, different things of that nature. Um, in terms of scarcity, oh, I'm not offering this to everybody. I'm only going to sell it for a limited amount of time. Now, when you hear that, the number one reason why people do stuff and they say it's scarcity is because if I print up 100 T-shirts and I'm not really making no money, or even if I am, it's easier for me to say, hey, once these 100 T-shirts are gone, they're gone. Because when I make my next batch of T-shirts, even if those T-shirts are ugly and you get an understanding of, hey, every time this guy sells stuff, it sells out relatively fast. You're going to purchase a T-shirt because of the scarcity factor. Uh, same as if I was to um, write a book and print up physical books and autograph them. I'm like, oh, I'm only going to autograph 10 books. What that's going to do is drive up the value of those books. Because if I only autograph 10, then it's going to um, fall under the scarcity category. Because you say, okay, well, this is rare. Now, in terms of liking, when people see that you are well liked by others, in terms of other people online commenting, on your stuff and showing you admiration that's going to make them like you more in terms of authority when people appear to be gurus and like they know a lot about a particular industry it's also going to lend to that person having more influence in terms of social proof a lot of people look at follower counts and other metrics to determine if that person is somebody they should be listening to um, in terms of commitment and consistency if that person is posting consistently and if they look like they're committed to whatever they're trying to sell you it makes it a lot easier for them to get you in terms of reciprocity. Um, they do that through, hey, I'm giving you free information. You know, click the link, sign up for my email. You're going to get free information in there. And that's how they suck it and loop in a lot of people. Now, other scams that people need to be aware of as well is to start your own copywriting, marketing, ad agency scam. And usually what happens with this is you pay somebody they give you some kind of fake blueprint that blueprint is usually going to be common sense watered down marketing information that either you kind of know or it's going to be things that you 100 percent already know and if you've already been trying to pursue this route you've probably done these things on the list um other scams going to include these people saying hey we'll grow your accounts for you and all they're going to do is charge you like a hundred dollars and buy fake followers and send those fake followers your way and make you think that those are real organic people interacting with your content and all you have to do is make more reels or make more posts in order to actually get sales they're also going to use um, bots to boost other metrics on terms of watch time and engagement and other things they're going to make it seem like it's all organically happening because they have some kind of secret sauce that you didn't have uh another thing that they'll do is um let's say you follow somebody that's famous online there's going to be an account that follows you back and it's going to have a similar name as that person and they're going to try to do business and act like they have to use a secret account to do business with you for whatever reason and a lot of times people will buy into all of this stuff and then when they don't see the results they get mad at the influencer or they get mad at themselves and then they turn around and they move on to a similar influencer promising similar results now something else is going to be a lot of times people sell trendy products and services and then they bounce from product to product so if it's the fitness community oh hey you don't need to go to the gym you can work out at home i have secret calisthenic techniques that you need to know or you got to do keto, or you got to be vegan, or you got to do the carnivore diet. You got to try living off the grid. Um, avoid big pharma. There's a minimalist uh, scam where it's like, hey, yeah, you don't really need all this stuff, but you do have to pay me for a course in which I'll show you how to live a minimalist lifestyle. Um, and just all across the board, infant is in every niche, whether it's CrossFit, bodybuilding, powerlifting. You know, they try to make it like, oh, this is the elite and most peak form of fitness. And if you're not doing this, you're wasting your time. Hey, buy my free course or buy my friend's course to learn the secret techniques and methods for being successful in this field. And then the last but not least, uh, the most trendy thing is always going to be the Internet marketing and copyright and ad um, genius scam. What these people do is no matter what you're interested in selling or doing online, They've niched down and they have the perfect funnel, the already done for you templates and things of that nature. And all you have to do is buy it and use it for your particular product and you're going to be immediately successful overnight. Now, outside of those people, you're also going to have the sales coaches. And what those people do is they come in and say, hey, I know that you got a construction business, a painting business, uh, you work at McDonald's, whatever. I know a secret way that you can increase sales overnight you should 
let me take over your ad um, campaign or your business account and I'll charge you a small fee to get started. And if you don't see results, I'll give you back your money. Those people never give you back your money and they never really do any of the things that they say they're going to do. And a lot of times, again, people hop from person to person making the same promise. And a lot of times people with these blueprints don't realize that that same blueprint that you're using, a thousand other people are also using. Now, something that I want you guys to consider in terms of, oh, I don't know how to determine a fake guru or not. One, if it's fitness and these people can't bench 135 pounds or they look like they can barely perform certain types of exercises, that's going to let you know that they're not a fitness guru. If the number one thing that they do on all their accounts all day, every day is talk about how to buy their product and their product is a product on how you can become a better salesperson and get other people to become um, online personal trainers or sales people as well that's also going to be a red flag um if they're selling miracle supplements so sea moss and everything else which may have validity but their number one thing is hey buy these particular items that's going to let you know that they probably really don't know anything in their industry if they're not even bothering to talk about current topics and trends and events and offer informative information in general regardless of what that industry is those are red flags that those people are just trying to mislead you put a wool over your eyes and take your money now with that being said something else that holds a lot of people back from making money online is that a lot of people are getting their information from blogs that have nothing to do with you actually making money what they're actually doing is they're an affiliate link blog and they're making money off you clicking the links and watching the ads on their channel. So things like Nerd Wallet, Credit Sesame, uh, Credit Karma, all these places when you go on their website, you check your credit score. They give you some nuggets of information in terms of what you need to do to improve your credit. Then you click the link, you sign up for these cards. They get a percentage um, when you apply for the card, whether you get the card or not. The same with the loans and the different things they talk about. For example, like all these sites, they be like, oh, avoid predatory loans. But they all have sections on their sites for predatory payday loans where you're going to be paying a, a astronomical fee to get a loan. Like you get a loan for $500 and then the interest on it is 60% or something crazy like that. So you have to watch out for these people because the way they are right there, articles and present information at the end of each article they're going to start trying to walk you down a path of purchasing something from them using one of their services signing up for a credit card or auto loan or something that you can only do on their website um and then they're also going to probably try to force you into the gig economy in terms of getting you to sign up for an instacart uber lyft and not that there's anything wrong with those particular fields but those people are being dishonest in how they present their information and a lot of times these companies and these blogs that appear to be organic and owned by one person is actually owned by a bigger conglomerate that pushes all these products so with that being said uh another thing that i want to talk about and again like i said i'll make a video talking about other um scam online businesses when people say oh you can get an lc for a hundred dollars and just start from there or you can spend three dollars on a blog and start making millions um I'm going to make a separate podcast breaking that stuff down, but I am going to touch on it uh, briefly. So first and foremost, the blog thing, people will say, hey, you know, you can make a blog. All you got to do is go on there, post, write about your life, post a product. People are going to buy it. It's not going to happen. You have to establish authority in these fields. People have to know who you are. They have to know, like, and trust you first and foremost. Uh, the freelance thing, people say, hey, man, just get on Fiverr and find a, a graphic designer find somebody who's good at marketing and they all charge five dollars which on fiverr people charge different prices for different things but they're going to basically tell you to become a middleman and find these people who are super talented and then act like you have your own agency or that you are the freelancer and go on other websites and try to pick up work but what you're doing is you're shooting yourself in the foot because one you're wasting a lot of time to try to fool people into thinking that you're a, a one-stop shop and then you have to rely on the other people to actually do their jobs in a reasonable amount of time the other side of scale too is all these freelance websites require you to have pre-existing skills uh different people that oh yeah just get on fiverr and say you're um a marketer and learn as you go when people hire people on fiverr they're expecting the results with amazon like speed so they're not expecting somebody to 
um, charge them $500 who doesn't have $500 of value to offer. Uh, something else to consider, like if you are jumping on like freelance.com or any of these other sites and you don't know how to use Photoshop, you don't know how to code, you don't know how to do a number of different things. The only thing you should be doing on freelancer.com is looking at the services people offer, what their skill set is, and then trying to figure out how you yourself can acquire those skill sets. Because if you get out here trying to rip people off, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. And when people in the future recognize you and realize that you probably took money from them and you didn't know what you were doing they're just going to expose you and they're going to make it increasingly harder for you to make money online now the other thing to consider is the survey people the video game tester the product tester the people who oh just send us money for the product to cover shipping and you're going to make your money back people you have to be wary of those people because when you do these surveys and these other things can you make money online? Sure, you can make some money online, but the number one thing is a lot of times these people have uh, payouts. So let's say you do a survey, you get $10, and then the payout is for $100, meaning until you make another $75 or whatever, they're not going to send you a check or send the money to your PayPal. So essentially, they got you doing free work. And a lot of times with these survey sites or these video game tester things, they require you to purchase equipment so you're never really going to make a profit now something else that i see encouraged online is to write a book if most people had the skill set and ability to write a book and i'm not doubting people's ability to do so but nine times out of ten if that was a thought that crossed your mind you would have been did it you already been in the route of doing it and also when you write a book it's not gonna it doesn't mean people are gonna instantly buy it or care about it so that's something else that i see online that's very dishonest that's being pushed um outside of that people say oh become a tutor if you don't really know the information you can just youtube it and then uh get back to the student that is also going to be detrimental and that's going to be something that's going to get you uh not necessarily kicked offline but when people start to recognize hey you used to do that other scam nobody's going to want to bother with you like the internet nowadays people are very good at doing research and exposing people now, the last thing on this list is going to be the virtual assistant, work from home crap. A lot of times people say, hey, yeah, you could just be a virtual assistant. If you've never been a secretary before or an assistant before, you're probably not going to be able to do that. And a lot of times what's required is going to be a lot of things and you're not going to be able to accomplish those things in addition to if you work another job, uh, your own work-life balance, your family balance as well. So that's another scam. And you also have to consider like who needs a virtual assistant and what route would they typically take to get a virtual assistant? A lot of these things, you would have to have an inherent and existing and pre-existing skill set in order to be good at it. And most of the time, if you already had those skill sets, you will already be doing it. Now, with that being said, I want to go back to the fake gurus and their courses. So how do online gurus make money? In general, they make money a variety of different ways. So affiliate marketing, which is every time you click a link, they get a percentage when you purchase something, sponsorships, um, offering coaching, membership sites, hosting events, uh, and other digital products. And inherently, there's nothing wrong with that as long as there's actual value being given and you actually have the opportunity to be successful. I don't have an issue with it. But what happens nine times out of ten is most people do not have the uh, ability to become successful. And those people are only good at getting you to purchase things while they um, verbally masturbate and spew out crap that sounds like something, but it's really nothing. And a lot of times they get you guys to do what I consider actionless motion, which is they make you do various tasks to make you feel like you're doing something um, worthwhile. And nine times out of 10, you're probably not doing anything of uh, true value and you're not really going to see any money. And uh, most of the time, in addition to that, the only way you're going to see money is going to be because they're going to make you sell people their course or their products. And then you're going to get paid a commission off that. Now, why do people go down the route of becoming fake gurus? As I stated earlier in the podcast, a lot of times people know that the people they're watching are promoting misinformation, but they're infatuated with the fact that that person is a charlatan and that person can get away with behaving this way unchecked. And that person appears to have a mansion or appears to have a penthouse or appears to have um, nice cars, clothes, jewelry, and different things of that nature and because it appears that they do what that does is it lowers your guard and you're more willing to listen to them 
and then you're more willing to do business with them. Now, this is very manipulative because a lot of times people are looking for guidance and mentorship and they get behind somebody because like let's say if it's a man he might pose the um he might pose himself as like an alpha male like oh i get all the women and i can turn them down at any given time i get out of bed when i want to i work out when i want to um i do business when i want to and i live life on my own terms and then people who are weak-minded desperate and not living life on their own terms are going to flock to this person and people who are enthralled by this person's personality and enthusiasm is also going to want to purchase things from this person and a lot of times people know that this is just as fake as watching wrestling but they still tune in and they still fork over their money now this is unethical and a lot of times what happens is people just simply bash this person and they fall off and then new people find this influencer or guru through social media and ads and re-sign up for the crap that they're spewing so that's something to consider um the other thing people do is they try to figure out what can lure people in and it's usually the same um corny gimmicks the one the get rich quick get rich overnight get rich in minutes you really don't have to learn anything everything that i'm selling you is going to make you a more effective salesperson. These people claim that, you know, they can sell salt to a slug. They can sell water to a well. They can bring a horse to water and make you drink it. And any other impossible metaphor, they can do it all. So they're like the Chuck Norris, MacGyver of um, sales and marketing, which if that was the case, they would probably be doing something bigger than like fitness sales or real estate. They would probably be like a politician. They would probably be really fixing world... Um, and societal issues, not just online talking to a niche group of people. And oftentimes people don't consider that the people they have around them are paid actors in a sense that prop them up and make them seem like they are just the best person in the whole wide world. Now, something else to consider is that these people nine times out of 10 have no background in these fields. They might even highlight it like, hey, I'm a college dropout. I don't know anything about real estate, but I've got into real estate and I've made billions of dollars. You can too. Now, the reason that's a red flag is because they'll try to dismiss whatever the objection is by saying, oh, it's so easy and I'm an idiot. Anybody can do it. And then you back, you know what? You do seem like an idiot and you do have a lot of money. So anybody can do it. Sign me up. The other side of the scale is going to be when you click uh, their links and they take you to a Discord or they take you to uh, a Patreon or some other free thing. If they were really making as much money as they claim to be making, they would have a paid website. So would it be a website that you would go to, you would sign up in, and it would take you to a back end. They would probably have an actual app for members. They wouldn't be using cookie cutter software. The other side of the scale too is when you click the offer pages and it's just an ugly template from ClickFunnels or something else. If they were really making as much money as they claim, they would be trying to figure out how to minimize overhead by creating their own software websites and platforms they wouldn't be piggybacking off of somebody else's um something else to consider as well is the uh just the overall sales funnel like a lot of times they'll walk you through a bunch of free information free offers free ebooks all of it offering little to no value whatsoever because a lot of times they know when they send an ebook you're not going to actually read that ebook you're just happy that you got something for free. So when they start trying to sell you things, it's going to put you in a position where you be like, well, I already got a ton of free crap from them. So if I use the free crap and the paid crap and I mix it together, I'm going to become some billionaire. Now, the other side of the scale is they're not very transparent with how they make money. And a lot of times people have sponsorships because somebody who is a good advertiser will pay somebody to promote a product for them because that person is the face. For example, a lot of times when celebrities write self-help books, so like Steve Harvey with the um, act like a woman, think like a man book, he didn't write the book, somebody else wrote the book and they used him as the face for selling the book. Something that people don't consider is with YouTube, a lot of collaborations and things happen because when you become monetized, you get access to a back end, that back end, you'll get a list of people that you can do free collabs with that is in your immediate area or in other areas of the United States or world that have similar interests to you. And then they also have a paid platform where you, okay, I could just pay this person, you know, a hundred dollars. They're going to mention me organically on their channel at some point throughout the month. I could pay this person a thousand dollars. I can fly out to their location and 
fake interview him or fake kick it with him. And that's how a lot of people uh, come across as having established relationships. And a lot of times you might look up and be like, how would these two people even know each other? Because it might be a um, disparity in terms of age, uh, wealth level, um, distance in terms of where they live to each other and different things of that nature. But it's really just a clever way of marketing to people and walking them down a sales funnel because when they're not transparent with how they make their money but you see that they align themselves with a bunch of other people who also say they're rich it's going to make you think okay i can let my guard down and trust this person because these other influencers that either you trust these influencers or you at least heard of these influencers are doing business with them and hang out with them so it makes sense for me to do business with them as well and then another thing is most of the time they won't sell you an actual product because you are the product and what i mean by that is you have to consider the fact that um, this person would tell that they made money so many different ways. And most of the time, oh, I made it overseas or I made it in a way that you really can't track uh, because I no longer am in that business or I sold that business. And they're very ambiguous with how they made money. They'll just mention, oh, I was successful in the past. And then they'll kind of flash their current trinkets in front of you to try to lure you in that way. Um, and what you don't realize is that, okay, well, Let's say I'm watching somebody and they always, like somebody who reviews stuff on YouTube. So let's say I'm a person, I review two cameras, which camera is better. Nine times out of 10, they don't really give you a definitive answer. And they have Amazon affiliate links in the description box. And they have links to like Best Buy and other places where you can purchase that stuff. And then they also have uh, affiliate links to everything else that they can possibly sell you. They make money off the fact that you will click those links and purchase from those websites and something else to consider as well is like people who review stuff consistently only review stuff consistently because those companies will send them products and a lot of these companies will send a product and pay that person to review it so that person is never really going to say oh don't buy this crap but they're going to say oh these are some drawbacks but i still encourage you to buy it the reason they're doing that is because they got a check from that company um they got an affiliate link they can use and then they also got a free phone or free whatever now the reason that they make money is because they make money off of you believing that they're going to give you honest and unbiased um opinions on different things and it's going to lure and sucker you into making purchases with those companies now the last thing i think i want to talk about in this particular category is going to be um they get others to do the work for them and then they take credit for it so in terms of like uh, social media influencers a lot of times oh I made a t-shirt like no you got a graphic designer you didn't create it but they will act like they had creative input in it in order to make you think that oh this person is so creative they're artistic not only do they um, are they a full time gamer on YouTube but they also can draw and they can do so many other amazing things I'm going to support them and buy this particular product when really somebody probably came to them with an idea or with the product already done or it's like hey for every t-shirt that you sell for $50, give me $5. Now, the reason that this is done a lot is because people who are graphic designers or writers or uh, marketers know that, hey, I'm not necessarily the image or face that can pull this off. But if I find somebody who can and take a percentage, I'll be able to make a decent living. And that's what they do. Now, easy ways to kind of highlight if a person is having being propped up by somebody else is going to be them flashing cash flashing screenshots acting like they live in a flashy lifestyle and a lot of times these flashy lifestyles are always going to be business expenses so if they can't return the stuff that they're wearing and using in the videos back to the store they're going to write it off on their taxes so it's essentially like they got it for free um in terms of other people speaking well of them it's usually paid testimonials uh, another thing is going to be oh well you know I grew up a certain type of way or I came from this certain type of background, but nobody in that industry can really uh, speak to that and can really, I guess, verify that those people are who they say they are. Now, the other common scam as well is like sometimes people get you to sign up for free for their stuff. And what they do is, uh, let's say I run an ad for $10,000. I run that ad. In that ad, I'm giving you a free program. And let's say that program is on how to uh start a franchise so you learn a lot of information in that program that i gave to you for free but i might say oh in order for you to start a franchise you need to have 
$20,000. You have to be able to give me $10,000 and then the other 10 is going to go towards starting that franchise and you don't have any money. So then when I'm going to say, hey, I have this other course that you can buy because when you buy that other course from me, I'm going to get paid from that. And then I have another course that you can send to your friends and send to potential investors. And when they buy that particular course, because they need their own copy as well, I'm going to make I'm selling it for 500. I'm going to make 400 off it and I'm going to give you 100. Now, if you make $100 X amount of times, that's going to give you that money for that 20,000 that you need to start your franchise. And this turns it into a pyramid scheme because now everybody that enters into this is thinking they're a part of some elite secret group and all they have to do is sell this particular product to get to the end goal of having the money to start the franchise. And now this is done across the board with everything is done with like T-shirt brands um, is done with makeup, with lashes, with shoes. Uh, like Stock X is very big in terms of people trying to resell stuff. People buying old cars online at auctions, trying to figure out how to resell them and different things of this nature. Like the people might give you the information or some of the information. And when you're stuck, that's when they introduce their other product to make it seem like, hey, I know that you're stuck. A lot of people get stuck here. Unfortunately, I cannot give you this information for free. You can purchase it, and once you purchase it, it's going to put you in a position where you can become a millionaire. Now, the number one thing I want you guys to take away from this video before I close it out because I did a lot of ranting is people have clever ways of presenting themselves as if they are organic in their intentions. And those are people who I'm not saying you should stray away from. I always encourage people to watch people for uh, entertainment, for one. Two, if you're in the industry, like for me personally, I will watch fitness influencers who have no idea in terms of what they are talking about because people have personable uh, personalities that can rub off on you. And if you're somebody like me, who's more of a bookworm and more scientific in my approach when I talk to people, uh, learning terminology and different things that can make me a better salesperson in terms of dealing with people face to face is always going to be imperative and learning to communicate to people in a way that they understand is always going to be imperative because somebody who wants to tighten their core doesn't want to hear about the transverse the dominance or the internal external obliques they want to hear buzzwords that's going to speak to them to let you know that you understand their pain point now in general i do feel like a lot of online influencers a lot of online businesses it doesn't matter if it's uh airbnb if it's uber if it's um amazon they try to target people's pain points in terms of hey you're desperate right now you need to make some money you should drive uber you're desperate right now you need to make some money you should start an amazon fba account you're desperate right now you need to make money you should rent out a spare room and they try to do it in such a way where it seems like they're trying to help you and they're not trying to sell you because when you're in a position where you're trying to help somebody when you mention oh i sell stuff people feel indebted to you because you feel like you got a lot of free information when in reality nine times out of ten it's probably not truly free information and it's probably not things that you didn't already know so something i always encourage people to do in terms of starting a business is to invest in a proper education go online go on youtube go on social media get a general consensus for the actual companies and products that are putting people in good positions and helping people in terms of social media influencers, I always encourage people to steer clear of them. If those people are making as much money as they claim they make, they will be in Forbes. If they're not in Forbes, uh, if the New York Times, the New Yorker, uh, TMZ, Chicago Tribune, Sun Times, whatever, if nobody's writing articles about them and singing their praises, uh, outside of their niche market on social media, they're lying. A lot of times, especially in California and Florida, a lot of people will pose in front of cars that's not theirs, pose in front of mansions that's not theirs, um, go on prop airplanes and pretend like they're flying private or that they own a plane and different things of that nature to seem like they're actually making money. A lot of times people use fake screenshots and fake money, especially when you go to California, New York, Florida, places that have modeling agencies, They'll go to these modeling agencies and get cheap models and act like those people actually hang around them in real life all day, every day, the whole day. And that's not necessarily the case. Now, online marketing in general and online sales in general has become the this generation's version of infomercials and reality shows. So it's a blend of, of products and services and people that's a false reality. So in terms of people acting like, oh, I, I use Athletic Greens. Like you watch... Somebody on YouTube, they're going to throw that out there. You watch somebody on um, 
Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. They're going to throw that out there. You listen to somebody on Spotify, and it can all be different genres, different backgrounds, different interests. They're all going to always subscribe to, like, somebody be vegan and be like, hey, if I was to eat meat, I would recommend ButcherBox. Description, uh, link in the description. Like, they're all promoting the same crap because they get paid from it. It's like when people who don't read books randomly be like, hey, yeah, um, you know, get this Audible account or get this on Kindle, link in the bios because that particular thing might have a high commission on it and they want to make the money off it. If you're looking to make money online, I'm going to make future podcasts where I break down understanding marketing, how to brand yourself, uh, deciding if you should or shouldn't go into business for yourself or not. Um, if you will have to go the route of going to a commercial bank to get a loan or seeking out crowdfunding or private investors and different things of that nature to help you determine uh, what's going to be the best route for you to take. But in general, a lot of these people who are selling you courses on how to make millions are only making millions because they're selling you those courses. And it doesn't matter if they do it up front and they're blunt and honest about it or if they walk you down a long funnel um, and a long path of, oh, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to give you information. When they go out their way to hit your pain points and speak to your emotions and try to make you act in an emotional manner, they are trying to sell you because nine times out of ten, they know that somebody in a bad position is just going to pull the trigger and make that purchase. Now, it becomes detrimental when somebody like me for personal training, for example, it becomes increasingly harder for me to sell personal training because everybody watches people give out, quote unquote, free information online. And then they think they know how to work out. And then you see people, even if you don't really work out like that and you go to the gym, you can look at certain people and tell that they're doing a workout that they saw on TikTok. And a lot of times you can see people doing weird um, fringe and cringe exercises. You know that they got it from a particular influencer on TikTok or YouTube. And it's detrimental because not only with just personal training, but with real estate, with crypto and everything else, people then themselves make the mistake of thinking that they know it all and they know how to do things, but they lack the results. So with fitness, people going to the gym, oh, I'm going to lose weight. I've been following this person. I bought their detox course and waist trainer and XYZ, I'm going to be slim in two months. And then you see them two months later and they look the same. And then they're going to be following somebody different or they're going to be buying that person's next program because something wasn't quite right with the last program with their body type. Or they're going to have some kind of excuse for why it didn't work out. Same with real estate, same with crypto. People aren't necessarily trying to understand how it works. They're just trying to learn the buzzwords to be able to sell you on the idea of buying crypto from them or buying a course from them. So long story short, Can you make money online? Yes. But if you're only interested in making money online because you're in a position where you know you feel like you could rip people off or you feel like you can take advantage of people and pull the wool over people's eyes, then I encourage you to stay offline. If you're not interested in developing hard skills, pause in terms of learning business and learning what you need to learn for that niche industry, then no, you shouldn't sell anything online. If you're only doing it to make money, you have no passion or no discipline to stick with a particular product or course or service or industry for the next five years or so, then you just simply have to stay offline. Now, that's all I wanted to touch on in this video. My next couple of videos, I'm going to be talking about how you can effectively lose weight. I'm going to try to get back into the health side of things. I'm going to make a couple of different podcasts about mindfulness as well. On my YouTube, I'm going to go back to posting some workouts. And I'm going to also be doing some how-to videos in terms of how to train particular muscle groups. That's all I want to touch on. I'm Xavier from DX the Trainer and Inertia Over Inspiration, and I'm out.